Uh, good afternoon. This is the um, lesson for sound. Your job list is as follows. Complete the tasks. Remember task. Uh, fill in the caps. There is a worksheet that is separate to this that you can use. You can print and use. And then mark them. Uh, read through the notes on the model slides. Answer the questions on the try and apply slides. And finally, complete the assessment questions after completing the slideshow, and that is on a separate sheet. Okay, so let's just move on and start the lesson. So here we are. This lesson is about sound, and sound is basically generated by vibration, so an object moving. You can see here that we have a uh, speaker that's moving backwards and forwards that's generating these waves that are moving out from the red paddle or the red speaker and they're moving out and what's happening is you've got um, compression which is the red bit and rarefaction which is the uh, blue bit the compression you can see that the, the particles are basically squashed together and the rarefaction the particles are spread out slightly. So here is the um, gap exercise to start. You have some words to um, use and they are here at the bottom. Okay, if I could just move this, I'd be happy, but I don't think I'm going to be able to. Okay, so you use the words to fill in. So what I suggest that you do right now is that you stop the uh, video and um, you spend some time on filling it in using the words. Okay, welcome back. Let's now go through the answers. So, law of reflection states that the angle of reflection is always equal to the angle of incidence. Both angles are measured relative to the normal, a line that is at 90 degrees to the reflecting surface at the point of reflection. In other words, where the ray strikes the, um, the mirror or the surface. A plane mirror forms a virtual image which is unlike a real image in that it cannot uh, cast onto a screen. In other words, it doesn't actually exist. The image is in the plane of the mirror, also the same size and the same way up as the object. So if you look into a mirror from say a couple of meters away, the, you your reflection would also be a couple of meters away. If you move to a meter, the uh, reflection would move to a meter. If you are half a meter, the reflection would be half a meter. If you move right up against and put your nose on the glass, the your reflection would do the same thing. And we know that from, from just operating mirrors. Okay, so here we have sound waves. So sound waves are longitudinal waves. We know that already. We have already explained this. Um, carried by compression and rarefaction of the air or other medium. So you can have sound waves in rock, in air, in water, in metals, any, anything where the, there are particles for the energy to be transferred. The speed of sound depends on the type pressure and temperature of the medium in which it is traveling through. In dry air at 20 degrees Celsius, the speed is around 343 meters per second. The average speed in air is about 340 meters a second. So it's not particularly fast in comparison to light, for instance. It's quite slow. And that's why we can now, as human beings, travel faster than the speed of sound. Here is the um, diagram. You've seen this one before. 
you may wish to stop the video at this point and note down the information off the slide or you may be happy already knowing the information already so you've got areas of compression in here you've got another area of compression here and you've got another area of compression here so that's basically where the particles have been squished together the wavelength is from one middle of one of these peaks to another one of these peaks okay and therefore the wavelength from there to there would be another wavelength so the movement of the air particles as it says here is simply backwards and forwards they rock backwards and forwards a little bit the direction of travel of the wave is that wave any energy way the, sorry the way in which the energy travels is also parallel to the motion of the wave in other words it will be that way as well okay producing sound now this is something you could try at home if you have a ruler just put your hand on the desk and you can vibrate the ruler up and down okay you flick it and it will vibrate backwards and forwards so to produce a sound we need we need a, a vibrating source to push air backwards and forwards so if you have a speaker if you put your hand on a speaker you can actually feel that the speaker is moving okay and if you've got um, people who drive and they've got their own car and they've got big subwoofers in the car you can actually feel that compression wave if they've got it turned up loud or if you put your hand on the speaker you can actually feel the speaker moving to produce ultrasound we need we need to push the air backwards and forwards at a higher frequency in fact what we need to do is we need to push the air backwards and forwards at 20,000 Hertz and this is the limit of human hearing I should put something on there it's the limit of most human hearing there are some people who can hear slightly higher than 20,000 Hertz uh, some children and uh, some female females also can hear above 20,000 Hertz okay the sound sounds are produced when an object vibrates we've said that the bigger the bigger the vibration okay in other words if you have a if you have a, a ruler and you gently flick it that sound won't be as big as if you really gave the ruler a, a, a good wang if you like um, and it came up and down quite tremendously um, basically the bigger the amplitude the louder the sound and you can tell that the amp what amplitude is amplitude is the distance from this middle line okay to the top of one of the crests which is here or from the middle line down to the bottom here okay so you have amplitude is from that middle line to the top of the crest or amplitude is from the middle line to the bottom here and basically it's just saying how big the sound is how loud that sound will be and you can see that this sound here is going to be loud this sound is going to be quieter than that sound because the amplitude the distance between that line here and that li that line there is smaller than here so that's going to have a lower amplitude therefore it's going to be a quieter sound and here you've got a high frequency high amplitude sound and you can tell that the, this frequency is higher or high pitched in comparison with this one okay because these wavelengths are closer together okay so the distance between these is much much shorter in comparison with this one here so the one at the bottom here we've got we've got um, a low frequency sound okay you can tell that because the waves are basically there's only one wavelength there so from there to there is one wavelength so that's going to be a low frequency sound and this one is just a voice so this is your voice um, a human voice so you can see that there okay so let's now move on to loudness so loudness of a, of a sound increases when the amplitude of the, of the sound so if you've got a quiet sound those waves will be very small 
if you've got a loud sound, those waves will be very big. Okay. And it's about the amount of energy that that has. So this has less energy than this. So therefore, this sound will be quieter than that one. So pitch. Pitch is basically the musical term used for frequency. So in science, we will use frequency. So high pitched would be high frequency. Low pitch would be low frequency. In other words, the sound, if you have a low frequency sound, the wavelength would be very long. The sound would be very low. Okay. And if you have a high pitch to high frequency sound, the wavelength would be very short. So the wave, the, the peaks of the waves would be very close together and the noise would be very high, um, like a squeaky noise or um, something along those lines. So much higher, higher note. So low pitched, you can see that the wavelengths are spread out. High pitched, you can see that the wavelengths are um, compressed together. So this is a high pitch sound. This is a low pitch sound. So an idea of something would be a low pitch sound would be something like a bass drum or a kettle drum. And this would be something like a violin or um, a guitar or something like that. So now we have um, we have amplitude and frequency. So here we have different wavelengths. Sorry for my drawings here. Um, not the best best in the world. So low amplitude, low frequency. We can see that the wavelength from the top to the middle is not is not very far. Therefore, the um, amplitude would be very low. And also, there is not very many wave peaks there, so therefore the frequency would be very low too. Low frequency, low amplitude, high frequency. Well, we can see that the distance from there to the to the middle is small, but the number of wave peaks that we've got is large. So therefore, low amplitude. So in other words, a quiet sound, but higher pitched, higher frequency sound. So high amplitude, low frequency. So you can see that this would be a loud sound, but it would be quite low noted. So something like a rumble or a kettle drum or something like that. And here you've got a high frequency and a high amplitude as well. So the middle point to the top is um, much bigger than the ones from earlier. And also the distance between the peaks has become much shorter therefore the frequency has become higher. Frequency just means how many there are in a given time. In other words, if this was one second, if the period from here to here was one second, okay, the frequency of this one would be low, the frequency of this one would be a bit higher, the frequency of this one would sort of like be in the middle, so two, and the frequency of this one would also be about the same as this one, okay? So frequency is simply how many waves you have in a given time. And that time is always one second. So hearing ranges. Now, we as humans have a hearing range. In other words, we can hear sounds between a particular value in Hertz to another value in Hertz. And the value that we start hearing things at is 20 hertz. Okay, and we go up to about 20,000 hertz. Now, anything below 20 hertz is known as infrasound. And anything above 20,000 hertz is known as ultrasound. Okay, and we can't hear sound down here, and we can't hear sound up here. However, something that's interesting about this sound here is if you have, say, very loud speakers and they go down to, say, two or three hertz, and they could be generating a huge pressure wave that will also damage your hearing, okay, but you would never hear that actually happening. And at this frequency here, you won't be able to hear it and this is frequency and much higher frequencies are used for uh, diagnostics for instance things like ultrasounds 
um, for pregnancies or for checking the wings of aircraft or um, various other things. Um, so it's used, it's, the sound is used to, to be able to see things. Bats use it, for instance. Dolphins use it. Okay, so this is a bit of information you need. You probably want to um, to uh, stop the, the video at this point. So any sound, any sounds which are which are unwanted are classed as noise. So anything you don't want. So for instance, um, it could be cars going by on the road. It could be your neighbour singing. It could be the next door neighbour's dog. Um, quite quite appropriate at the moment. I suspect we're all having those kind of problems. Um, it could be um, a child crying. So any noise that you don't want is technically classed as noise. The loudness of a sound is measured using decibel scale. Now the average human being can only distinguish between a, 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 an increase in decibels of three decibels. Okay, um, and you won't be able to hear the difference in, in loudness um, until it's gone over three decibels. So on this scale above, 85 decibels uh, will cause damage to your hearing. Now 85 decibels, you would have to be in that kind of noisy environment on a, a reasonably long time to cause you uh, permanent damage at that frequency. However, if you were working with something like uh, in an engine room on a ship or in a factory, um, producing something or um, working in a, in a mine or something, it may be that this is this all the time and also it could be higher and therefore, once you get to 85 decibels, or dB as it's called, um, you have to wear ear defenders, okay? And that's, a, that's now a legal requirement that you need to wear ear defenders. And the interesting thing about ear defenders is that you can wear them and still be in a very noisy environment, but still have a conversation with somebody who is standing next to you because the ear defenders are designed to allow um, the range of the human voice to get through where it dulls out all the noisy sounds. It's really quite cool. And you get noise cancelling earphones as well. 130 decibels is the threshold of pain. So that would be like standing next to a jet fighter taking off. Okay, that's really loud. Okay, and um, above 194 decibels um, that's the level where you would have a shock wave. In other words, that possibly would knock you off your feet, be very loud. So something like a, a bomb going off may produce 194 decibels or louder um, and create a shock wave. Ultrasound in pregnancy. So as we said earlier, um, you can use ultrasound um, in pregnancy to look at um, the fetus, the unborn baby, uh, the probe transmits uh, ultrasound waves at a frequency between 1 and 5 megahertz. This number here where it says M hertz means 1 million hertz to 5 million hertz. So that letter there, that big M there, just simply means multiply the number in front by 1 million. Okay, so in this case, it's 1 million to 5 million hertz. Waves travel in the body until they hit a boundary. So what happens is that every time a wave is pushed in, put into your body, for instance, with an ultrasound, the wave will go through the uh, body until it comes to a, a, a change in density of tissue. So for instance, it might go from... Uh, muscle into uh, the stomach, for instance. And because you get a change in, in density, you get a boundary set up. And at that boundary, some of that sound will be reflected back to the receiver that the ultrasound device has. And that can be picked up. And what happens is that 
over a period of time with some very clever maths and some uh, very clever engineering, um, they can build up a picture of what they're seeing inside your, your um, inside you. Um, something that's interesting that if you've ever had an ultrasound, what they'll do is they have like a it's called a transducer. It's like a usually a white thing with like a it's got like a head on it, and they put some gel on it, and then they put some gel on your stomach or on your neck or wherever they're doing this ultrasound, and then they put the transducer on it. That gel is to enable the um, sound, the ultrasound, to be transmitted from the transducer through to your uh, through your skin and into your body much more effectively because they want to see the things inside your body they don't want to just see the um, your outer skin if they didn't put the gel on they would get a reflection from your skin which would be quite big and probably block out images that they were looking for okay infrasound is at the other end so infrasound is the sound that is below the range of human hearing so at 20 hertz and some animals use infrasound for, for communication and you have an example of animals here that use infrasound um, and there is cases of elephants as well that use infrasound that the sound that they generate can travel for um, hundreds and hundreds and hundreds of miles and it's the same with whales if whales use sound that's um, that's very low that sound will travel much more effectively through water than high-pitched sounds okay so here is the, the hearing um, of sounds and down the bottom when my black box goes away you will see that there are different types of animals. There we go. So you've got humans there from about 20 hertz to about 20,000 hertz. You've got dogs that are hear slightly higher than us, and that's why they hear those funny whistles and we don't. You've got bats, which um, go up a bit higher. They use um, ultrasound to find um, food, and they click. They click, 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 and at a high frequency and what they do is that that sound bounces off an insect comes back to them and they can detect where that insect is and then catch it you've got elephants there it's about the same as us but if you notice they go much lower um, into the infrasound uh, spectrum mice very high and dolphins about the same as us a little bit a little bit higher but same as us but they also listen they also use ultrasound for um, finding prey, particularly in the seabed. They go along and they use that ultrasound to um, beam through the sand and then they can catch the flatfish that are in the, in the sand. Okay, something else that's interesting, that there are natural phenomena that also, um, that also um, produce infrasound. Earthquakes, for instance, um, and also um, volcanoes also produce sound. Some of it we can hear and some of it we can't. And it's been, it's been suggested that some animals are able to sense um, these waves before an eruption or an earthquake. And um, I had a friend who lived in America and uh, she said her animals always knew when they were gonna have an earthquake. Um, they always became restless and un, un, uncertain before the earthquake. Okay, so we've got the reflection of sound. So an echo, an echo is uh, reflected sound waves. So here is a question you've got. So a misguided child shouts Chelsea at a near, nearby cliff, and here's an echo. Uh, 1.4 seconds later, how far away is the cliff? Now you need to be aware that this here, you've got to take into account that we're asking how far the cliff is away, not how far it's, the wave has traveled. So take the wave speed at 340 because that's the average uh, speed of sound in, a, in air. Here is the person. Here's the distance it goes, bounces off the wall thing. So sound travels to and from the wall um, in a total distance of 2D. So 
it has taken 1.4 seconds okay so here we've got is we've got speed equals distance times divided by time sorry uh, which becomes distance equals speed times time so that gives you 350 meters per second times 1.4 seconds that gives you 475 meters 76 meters sorry and don't forget it's 2d therefore the cliff is 238 meters away so basically what you do is you divide this number the total distance traveled by the wave by 2 to get the distance from the person to the to the cliff or wall okay you may want to stop the video at this point and complete these questions all right here are the answers number one uh, 20,000 Hertz is the maximum hearing level of humans but I have said that some a very few people can hear higher than that the frequency of ultrasound is as we said earlier 20,000 Hertz this can also be represented as 20 kilohertz or 20 K Hertz number three infrasound is sound that is below human hearing and is given um, off by volcanoes. And number four, a, a sound that is reflected is known as an echo. And number five, the unit of frequency is the Hertz. All right, the following slides, if you wish to do them, is for the extension, but I'm not going to do the video for those, um, are the extension tasks. If you would like to have a look at these, these will these are be um, useful to you, um, but not compulsory for your course.